Hi guys, welcome to another video from Rossi Audio and um, today I am going to talk about this realistic STA 90. It is a 1970s receiver. Um, had it on test for a few days now and uh, uh, is now getting ready to get the faceplate clean because it has a little bit of uh, yellowing on the faceplate, uh, which is pretty normal for her. <laughs> these uh, units uh, these days. <clears throat> uh, what I like about this uh, stereo receiver here is that uh, even though it's a realistic one they uh, had the sense to put uh, real valnut or walnut veneer on it, genuine walnut. Uh, so it's not just like some cheap 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 uh, vinyl. Uh, sound wise, power wise, connection wise um, adjustments, things, all kinds of stuff that you uh, see on other more high-end or more po popular brands such as Marantz, Sansui, Pioneer, Yamaha. This one has all. It has the same uh, amount of stuff crammed into it. Um, we have a speaker selector here that has speaker A, B, uh, A and B and A plus B and Q wax. Um, I'm not very sure about what the Q wax is, but and then I have headphones out, dub out. The selector, of course, is between aux, phono, AM, FM, and FM mute. Tape monitor one and two, filter low and high, and of course you have the bass, the treble, and the balance, as everyone else has. You have mono and you have loudness and volume and then you have the FM selector dial thing up here. And of course the on and on power button over here. I like the color in the uh, display here. It's kind of like a warm orange uh, color. It needs two bulbs in here in these meters right there. And uh, there is a, there's a few things that needs to be done to it. It's not a perfect uh, specimen. It has a few nicks here and there and on the back. Very good. Uh, I like the layout on the back of it. Um, it says there that it's a model, a realistic model, 31-2063, but on the front it says STA-90. So we go by STA-90. And um, like I said, I've had it on uh, test for a few days. Uh, it, I am very, very surprised. Um, I have had a few real, realistic models in the past. Um, not this one, but others. And the result has been a little bit up and down. I liked a few of them, but uh, some of them were not something to brag about. But this one is one of the better realistic uh, receivers. Fairly powerful. Uh, has about 45 watts per channel. Um, mid to late 70s. Like I said, it has uh, real wood veneer, uh, has all the bells and whistles that you would like to see on them. Um, heavy? Yes, it is heavy. So um, when I got it, I was like, hmm, this, this can be a good one. I need to test this one out. So I tested it first on this, not to, because I didn't want to hook it up to a good pair of speakers first. <clears throat> and I always use this um, Denon DVD 1000 when I do test things. Um, this was the speakers that I used to begin with just to see if there was anything wrong with the outputs on it. And then I, I hooked it up to the Wandersteins Model 2 here, the uh, Altec Lansing speakers down there, and the Clips KG4 here. I also did a test with a Bose. And um, the test of the bows is nothing to uh, brag about. It's okay. Uh, but when I hooked this receiver up to the Vandersteen Model 2, it kind of showed its limits. It's um, Those speakers need way more power than 45 watt. Uh, and it, it showed, and you could hear it, that it wasn't struggling, but you didn't play the full potential of the speaker the way I know they can do. Uh, so I quickly hooked them off and I hooked up the Altec there, the 886A, and that was a very, very good match. 
I want to set up this receiver with those Altec speakers over there. Very good match. Sounds really good. Uh, good low end, good mid range, and nice tweeter and f high frequency range. Um, I have never been a big Klipsch fan of the smaller Klipsch models like Hurse and KG4 and all these all the smaller ones. I like the, the corner horns and the La Scalas and the bigger ones. But when I hooked this receiver up to these KG4s behind this receiver rack here, um, I was um, I got a, I got intrigued by the sound. Um, so that receiver fits the KG4s and the Altec really really good. Um, like I said, the Vandersteen's model two was a little bit too demanding on this amp. You probably need at least 100 150 watts on the Vandersteen's. Um, maybe even more. So 45 watt was a little bit on the light side. That said, um, I am very, very pleased with the result that this 45 watt per channel receiver do. Uh, compared to others, um, like I compared it to this model 1060 from Marantz. I also compared it to the uh, 2220 from Marantz and the 5150 from Sansui. Um, and this uh, STA-90 did not, did not stand back from the Sansui, no, the Kenwood, I mean, um, Kenwood 5150. Um, the Kenwood, uh, I wouldn't say this one sounded better than the Kenwood. Uh, I had the Kenwood over here. Um, the Kenwood did not sound as good or powerful as this one. The Marantz 2220 is, of course, uh, almost, well, it's half the power, but um, the 2220 has a very nice sound, but this one is, this one is more powerful than the Marantz 2220, and it should be. However, when I hooked up the uh, 1060 over there, then that one was about the same as, as this one, uh, maybe a little bit more powerful than the realistic, uh, and the sound was a little bit better, I want to say. Um, but, um, hey, as a bu budget receiver, because you can get these receivers here in nice condition, nice working condition for anywhere between 175 and 300 bucks. And I want to say that's pretty not darn good. It's a nice price range. So if you're looking for, um, receiver in a, in a budget price range, Absolutely look into getting a, a bigger or medium size or bigger realistic. They uh, they perform very well. Um, the only thing that I can say uh, maybe is a drawback is it probably doesn't have the same reception or the strength on the FM reception as some of the other receivers that I have tested but it's not a big big difference but a little bit so I don't know if that's just because of this one or if that's something standard uh, for most realistic models and uh, so that's something you might want to look into and test if you get it if you if you look if you listen to a lot of FM stations and you you listen to radio a lot um uh, so um what what can I say about it? Well, it it, it surprised me, uh, it intrigued me, and I uh, I'm absolutely satisfied with the result that it it turned out. So can I uh, or would would I recommend this realistic STA dash ninety? Uh, absolutely. If you're looking for something not too expensive, like because now the pioneers and the Sansuis and the Kenwoods, the Sonys, the Morants. Yamahas, they're all going up in prices and they have a pretty high high price cap right now So if you're looking for something more Economical and a little bit more budget friendly Absolutely look into realistic. They have some great great products from the 70s um, But I would not go for the smaller realistic I think if this one is probably the smallest in in wattage that I would go and, and you can get the uh, realistic uh, re uh, receivers that powers all the way up to 100, 120, 25 watts or something like that. So maybe look into that. But then, then the price starts to go up again 
because more people are looking for those. But if you have a pair of bookshelf speakers or mid-size floor speakers and you just want you just want good sound without breaking the bank and you don't need to have a concert level volume level then these are I mean more than good enough for that use and you you probably would enjoy it for what it is and like I said when you have all the lights in the dial lighting up and this one cleaned off it will look really sharp so it has the looks, it has the performance for what it is, and um, I can't really speak to the build quality or something like that because I haven't really had them too long. They t tend to go out fast. But I mean, this, these are still around, so they should have a good build quality as well. So um, if you're looking for something fairly, f fairly, fairly good priced, it doesn't break the bank look into realistic and I want to say that the STA-90 gets two thumbs up from me and um, I, I mean if you can find it uh, in, one in working condition that looks nice and that's what you're looking for go for it don't even uh, think twice like I said you can get them from like 175 up to like 300 I've seen them in a very big range of prices this one I would probably list around 199 just because it has a few dings on the cabinet in the back. Uh, so probably this one is probably a, a candidate to be sold for around 200 bucks plus shipping. So um, there you have it guys. I would recommend this uh, realistic STA90 for sure. It's a good one. Take care.